Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 when posting videos to this channel. And if you're a regular viewer, you know what's coming next, and you might have been waiting for it. And that is, hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Please enjoy this digital confection that I found for you. We can all have some. Today I'd like to touch on a topic, well, that is hotly contested within the automotive community. In fact, anytime I post anything to social media about a timing belt, somebody who's in the timing chain camp has to chime in and talk about, start trashing timing belts and talk about how crappy they are and how much better chains are. And in a way, this video is something of a response to that. Inside of an engine, there are two main ro rotating components, and that is the crankshaft, which is connected to the pistons. So as the pistons move up and down, they cause the crankshaft to spin. And the camshaft or cam shafts, there could be several of them inside your engine. And that has little, basically little egg-shaped bumps on it. And as that rotates, that opens and closes the valves on your engine. And the valves, well, they basically control how your engine breathes so they allow air to come in and exhaust to go out. It's kind of like the computer program for the engine. Think of it like telling it when to breathe. So when to inhale, when to exhale, that's what the camshaft or camshafts do. Now the crankshaft and the camshaft, well they have to very specifically rotate within time. So engineers have choices when it comes to connecting the camshaft or camshafts and the crankshaft. And basically there are three main choices and that is a timing belt that they can use to connect it to, a timing chain, or they can use gears. And gears you usually see in like diesel applications, things like that, the heavy trucks and stuff. So they use a series of gears to connect the camshaft and the crankshaft. Not covering that here, just timing belts and timing chains. With a timing chain, that is within the crankcase. In other words, it's getting lubricated by the engine oil, it's, it's moving around with all the internal engine parts, and it's usually sealed off with a metal cover from the outside. Conversely, with a timing belt, the timing belt is sort of outside the engine, and it's outside the crankcase, away from that engine oil, because you don't necessarily want to get engine oil on your timing belt, but you do want to get engine oil on your timing chain so that it maintains lubrication and it works properly. So there's the main differences between the two. Now a timing belt requires periodic service. Now your service manual will have that service interval in it and it's usually somewhere around 100,000 miles. Could be less depending upon your vehicle. So be sure to check that service manual to find out when your, when your engine is due for a timing belt replacement. And many times when you go in and you do a timing belt replacement service, you also replace the water pump because many times that water pump is also driven by that timing belt. There's no point in going through all the trouble to replace that belt and leave that water pump that's just sitting there in there when it could fail down the road and you'd have to take all that same stuff apart anyway. So it's kind of considered to be a service item. So you replace the timing belt, you place the water pump, maybe some tensioners, maybe some other things while you're in there. And you do this periodically to prevent it from breaking or having other issues because I've seen issues caused by either timing chains or timing belts getting loose. And this brings me to timing chains. Now timing chains often use a hydraulic tensioner that has oil pressure behind it that pushes onto that timing chain and maintains a certain amount of tension on it. You have to maintain a given amount of tension on a belt or a chain, otherwise as things rotate they're going to start to flop around and you don't want that. So you need to basically keep those things in check and many times chain driven engines use a hydraulic tensioner to do that. Well, I've seen said hydraulic tensioners fail and once you lose tension on that chain, well that chain could also fail jump time and well you've got an engine that's not in time and usually doesn't run and sometimes breaks catastrophically. The same thing can happen with a belt but the belt, the belt well that can just break and this is a broken timing belt here that could mean engine damage also. In addition to a chain driven engine losing hydraulic pressure, what I've also seen is those guides that the chain rides on inside of the engine usually have some kind of plastic or nylon coating to them. Well, I've seen that plastic or nylon coating just fall away and then there's metal to metal contact between the chain and the guide and that can also cause a catastrophic failure. So chains can fail, but the main difference is, is chains do not have a service interval. There's no given interval where you go in every 100,000 miles and replace the chain. This is why chain people are all like, chains forever, because I don't have to spend you know, a bunch of money getting my timing belt replaced every 100,000 miles. And that is a valid point. 
But I'm on, well, kind of the other side in a way. I don't mind belts because you're in there doing a maintenance. And after I've done a belt, well, the engine runs pretty darn good. You don't necessarily get that with a chain driven engines. Things wear out and they continue to wear out over time and that's that. Whereas with a belt, you're in there periodically renewing all those parts, thus putting the engine back in time and making it happy. But again, that can be a very expensive prospect, especially on some vehicles, and well, that can turn people off to that particular vehicle. So it's really an engineering choice at the end of the day. I'm not gonna sit here and say that belts are better than chains. I'm gonna say they're both junk if they break. Other than that, I'd be out of a job. I'm just pushing back against those comments that people say the chains are so great, chains are the, the be all end all. And in some regards, they are. Like I said, no maintenance, no expensive timing belt and water pump to replace on a regular basis basis. But when they do fail, well, you've got to get in there and do major surgery. Sometimes more than you would if you just have a broken timing belt. So either one can break, either one can have a catastrophic issue with that engine and cause you to spend a bunch of money. The main takeaway from all this, maintain your vehicle. So if you have a chain driven engine, just keep up with your regular oil changes and the other fluids and everything in your vehicle. And that should make that thing last as long as it possibly can. As far as timing belts go, well, replace them at the regular interval and you should never have an issue with them. So it's really up to you what you want as far as a timing belt or a timing chain in your engine. Just know going in that if you have a chain or a belt, both can fail. One has a regular maintenance interval, one does not. And that's it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the differences between timing belts and timing chains and your opinions about such down in the comments. That's what they're there for. Let's have a discussion. I'll put links in the description to additional videos, information, stuff that, well, seems relevant. I will also put a link in the description to ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you go if you have automotive questions. I post ETCG1 videos on Mondays, so be sure to stop back and see me then. Also, be sure to hit notifications when you subscribe, because I know you want to subscribe. That way, you're also notified when I post the latest videos. Thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I will see you next time.